Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This is a sponsored episode by Regila Beauty. As women, our skincare needs are constantly evolving and changing. So it can get a little confusing when we need a new item to fit into our existing skincare routine to tackle new issues. Regila Beauty has a wide variety of items that are built to fit into your routine, whether you have youthful skin, mature skin, you're expecting, or you're even a new mama. If I told you that you could enjoy these benefits without the inconvenience or expense of changing your current skincare routine, but just by adding something wonderful and affordable to it. Skin that looks and feels more even-toned, firmer, hydrated, radiant, smoother, smaller pores. Well, Regila Beauty has the Hydrating Serum, and it is that something wonderful that I'm speaking of. It is perfect for busy moms at any stage of motherhood, whether you're trying to conceive, currently pregnant, nursing, or preparing for an empty nest. Our serum is the clean beauty, fuss-free add-in you've been looking for. It's formulated to be non-irritating for even the most sensitive skin. It's full of beautifying botanicals featuring hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vitamin C, the ultimate anti-aging trifecta. It sinks right into your skin effortlessly between your current toner, moisturizer, without feeling greasy or sticky. It's unscented and also free of toxic ingredients that could harm your health. Get it today by visiting Regila's Amazon shop at amazon.com slash Regila, R-E-J-A-L-L-A, or click the link in the description box now. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Make Life Fun Show, season three, where we're kicking off, we're talking about money, and it gets me really excited. So I'm so excited to introduce you to Carolyn Jones today. Carolyn, welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Yes, excited to be here. Being here. <laughs> Carolyn, well, tell us what is lighting you up right now, and also how you came to be the money lady. <laughs> Yeah, let me start from the beginning, actually. I've been a finance manager in a healthcare organization for many, many years. And being in healthcare, you know, people don't want to be there. You know, they're they're there for a reason and they, they need care. And sometimes that can have an impact on their bottom line. Mm-hmm. And so I'll never forget there was a family member that came and she had five children. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're just talking about her situation and so forth. And I could see the minute her face just changed when she was just about to ask a question and I knew what the question was and it was how much is this going to cost mm-hmm. and her whole face changed and she could see that it was just going to be a burden on her life and this is where I it was kind of like my aha moment thinking that if I can help people to be prepared for the unexpected, Mm. then I will make a difference in the world. And that's kind of how I came to start doing the money coaching. So yeah, I think that's why I'm passionate because I think a lot of people, you know, we kind of live day to day Mm -hmm. and we forget about as much as they come about every so often, these unexpected things, but we kind of ignore them until they're right in our face. And then what do we do? Right. So that is exactly it. We do. We are go on about living our lives and then something happens and we're like, now we're scrambling. And so how can we prepare a little better, especially when it comes to money and how can we prepare in a way that feels fun? Because for a lot of us, when we think about money, we think serious. Like I literally put on my serious money outfit today. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. You know what? It can be fun. I I totally 100% believe in that. And it's all about allocation. And so what I say is, pick some top goals. So if you're, what lights you up is you love to travel or you like to spend time with your family and do family activities, or, you know, if it's even cooking or baking or whatever it is that lights you up, put that as one of your money goals. Mm -hmm. 
and put money aside for those things. Yeah. And that is when it's going to become exciting. You're not yeah. going to only be paying bills or doing the day-to-day -day mundane things. You're going to see that bank account grow in the allocation that you've yeah. set aside. And so that is how money can become fun because once that target hits, you're like, yes, let's go. <laughs> let's exactly. <do> <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about budgeting and why it's so important and why we really, it should be mandatory because it really should. <laughs> it really should. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, is that people don't really know where their money's going, mm -hmm. right? So there's so many times, like, let me ask you a question. When's the last time you actually looked at a full month worth of bank transactions? So not just the balance in your account or, you know what I mean? Like not just the day-to-day, -day, but actually look at the full scale from first to the 31st. Yeah, my husband made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Last month, he said, something's going amiss here. Let's figure out what's happening. And I was just like, ooh, no. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So sometimes, you know, we got to like actually face it head on, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we pull out a full month of transactions and we go through line by line, and then I, I would suggest is just get a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be complicated and put things into categories. So let's say, you know, you had groceries, you know, every time you see a grocery line hit on your bank statement, put that in that category mm -hmm. and then start to do this. And even if it's coffee, right, you put that in a category, whatever it is. And then at the end, you have this picture and you see exactly where your money is going. Yeah. And then you can say to yourself, you know what? I think that trip with my family is way mm -hmm. more important than me having this coffee every day or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And so you can start to prioritize prioritize and actually see and make a budget out of that. Yeah. So it's also like kind of like the beginning steps towards yeah. um, so make, budgeting. So deciding what's most important to you, but first you have to see it. You have to paint the you picture have to for see yourself. It. Exactly. I remember when I was younger, I was so much more into that. I think I even had an app, the next yeah. app where you could, it sends you notifications when you're going over your budgets. Like you can actually digitize it to, Absolutely. I, I don't know why I haven't done it now, but I was. Yeah, so good for you. If you did, it, if you did that was, when you were younger. I was so much better at this when I was younger because yes, it is something that we need to be aware of. And if we can do those apps that can make it more accessible too, and also get in the pen and paper. And so you really see it. That's I think right. it's very helpful as well. Exactly. Before we started recording, I was telling you how for a lot of us, we are disconnected with money. And for me, how I found that disconnection is I used to work at a bank. I was a teller for three and a half years. And so I was dealing with a lot of money but it never even felt like money. It was just paper and it was completely, I was separate from it. And today, when I reflect back on that, I still feel I was totally disconnected to money. And I brought that into my day-to-day -day life now, like money is over here and I'm kind of over here. So mm -hmm. how can we start to be more connected to money and in a way that is doable, that we real. can do? Yeah, that is real. Exactly. You know, what's interesting is because times have changed so much and money is digital, it has become a digital force. So everything we do is we tap, right? We tap it. We don't see the money actually flowing through your hands, right? And so that is why where the disconnect is. It was reading an article, actually, and it was talking about buy now, pay later. And so you'll notice now when you shop online, these things will come up and offer you, oh, you know what? You don't have to pay right now. Why don't you do it over, you know, X amount of months? And you're thinking, well, that's much better than having to do it right now, right? And you're like, sure, sign me up. But what people forgot is that now you've just added another monthly payment to your budget, right? And so what I always say is, you know, if you really want to connect with what you're doing and your budget is to, you need to feel it. You need mm -hmm. to feel the money. And I know that cash can be a hard time is like, you know, managing that, like, you know, always bringing a bunch of cash, but it doesn't have to be cash. You can actually set up your bank account. So as your money is coming into your bank account, it's being automatically divvied out into your categories. Oh. So for instance, if you have groceries, you've automatically funneled that money into a separate bank account and you can see the money actually coming down. And that is how you build that connection with money because yeah. it's so easy to spend, but yeah. it's hard to make. <laughs> yeah. it definitely can be really hard to make. And so right? definitely when you're swiping, as you're saying, with a card and you're just not even thinking about it, you're just going day to day. And that's what was such a wake up call for when my husband was like, 
I don't know what to do, but we need to sit down and look at this. <laughs> exactly. And we went through and we went, like you said, went through the numbers and I was just like, oh my gosh. So there's automatic payments that are coming out that I'm not even using anymore. Exactly. There are things that are definitely draining my bank account that aren't even being used. And so when we get back to that connection and make it fun and what I did to make it fun, I'm just going to share because mm-hmm. I'm the fun girl. And so <laughs> I turned on like meditation music in the background. I literally lit a candle. We had the flowers. I put them right in front of me. Nice. And my husband was like, you're making it a whole thing. And I was like, <laughs> well, I've heard of these money dates. And so I know this is not like a, like we didn't call it that, but I've heard of it. And so that was kind of the image that I had in my mind was how can I make this like more pleasing <laughs> to myself so that it's not so dreadful. And so can you talk to us a little bit about these money dates and how often we should be doing them? Mm-hmm. So I would say do them weekly. You know what I mean? Right? Like, uh, because if you're making a plan, it's kind of like planning for the week. Right. Mm-hmm. So you know, the beginning of the week, you kind of plan for the week, you look at your calendar, you do yeah. things, whatever. Right. So what's what's the difference when it comes to money? Right. You might as well plan every week and how you're going to spend it. And then at the f- end of the that week and you're going into your next week, you can review it. Yeah. And if before things kind of get out of hand. Right. Because you've only had seven days, you can always correct it in the next seven days. And so I would highly recommend to do it every week. Yeah. And then another thing you brought on a really good point is to make it your own. Mm-hmm. Right. So whether that means, you know, if you reached a target now, like, you know, you and your husband can have this special time together doing something specific. And it doesn't always have to be like going out to this lavish dinner. You can make it something super fun and light and not have to be expensive. Right. But that's where the creative part comes in. And that's where the fun comes in. Right. When you make things a little bit more interesting. So it becomes like this thing where you're like, yeah, you're excited to do it. And it's not just like, oh, we're just going to go over the numbers and be, you know, (laughs) and be super boring it it actually can be something that you're looking forward to and spending time right yeah so it was the first one we've done since we've had kids like I said we used to be really really good about it when we were younger for some reason which is weird I'm just having this realization (laughs) now and now that we have kids and we're just go I think we're just doing more we're just doing more so we're more busy and so we put that kind of in the background and so I think when you have kids it has to become even more important because we have to Absolutely. teach our kids how to do this exactly. and so I would love for you to talk a little bit on how we could start to not only for ourselves make it something that is a priority but also for our, how we can teach our children mine is super young right now but I know he doesn't listen to what he's not going to listen to what I say. He's going to do right. what I do. <laughs> yes, exactly. And they're going to watch you. They're watching every step. So, you know, you take your kids to the grocery store, you take them everywhere with you. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they're watching how things are done. Oh, she's just picking up this and then put it in our cart and off we go. Right. Like, so they know how it works. And so just little lessons while you're doing something is more important than trying to sit down and have this conversation with yeah. your kid. Right. It's always done by action. And so, yeah. This is a very interesting thing. So I heard this person that I I listen to sometimes, she actually had a conversation about selling her home with her daughter and her daughter was young. I'm thinking like maybe five, six years old at this time, very young, right? And she's trying to explain that, you know, once you purchase a home, the home goes up in value. um, And when we sell, it's going to, you know, make money. And so she actually put her daughter's name on the deed of the mortgage. The daughter gave her life savings, which was like $5 at the time, right? And she said, okay, we're going to purchase this home, mommy. Yep, we're going to purchase this home. She put her daughter's name on the mortgage. And then afterwards, when like years later, 10 years later, the house sold, she gave that portion, the $5 had appreciated to X amount of money. And she gave that money and she actually cashed it out so she could show her daughter in cash how much money she made. And then she's all excited now. She's got this huge, you know, what it might have been, I don't know you know, $50, who knows how much it was appreciated by, right? Right. But that was a really good lesson because she saw it firsthand how putting money aside and actually is seeing the rewards of her investment. So yeah, we're such visual creatures. That is such a brilliant, brilliant way to show instead of tell. 
Exactly. Exactly. Now that's going <laughs> to live in her body. Like that excitement of seeing the money multiply is going to live in her body. It's that's gonna, right. She's going to feel that joy whenever she is multiplying her money. Like that's going to be a na- like her natural thing, like her that's natural right. default. And exactly. so if we can do that for our kids, what a gift we can give them. That's right. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing that yeah, yeah. with us because that is such <laughs> a brilliant way to do it. I would love for us to change a little bit and talk about the money mindset. Because that mm-hmm. is what gets us to actually do the things that yes. we need to do. Yes. We need to become the people that do the thing. And so do you have any mindsets that we can start to try on? And also, what are you seeing with your clients, the mindset that is getting them trapped the most? Well, you know, first, I think first is about recognition of who you are, because we're all different, unique people, right? So not one mold is going to fit every single person. And so I kind of talk about money personalities, right? And we all know who they are. We have the typical spenders, we have the typical savers. And, you know, there's so many more, there's like at least seven or eight different type of personalities when it comes to money. You really need to assess that because it's very hard, as you know, to change your personality type. Right. So let's say you're a giver and you find such reward in like buying someone a birthday mm-hmm. present. You, you know, you're really thinking about what the person may like and, you, you know, you make put a lot of effort into it, you know, like that's the person who you are, then that has to be reflected in your budget, Mm. right? Because that's what lights you up. That's what makes you have fun. And so if you're just like, oh man, I only budgeted like, you know, 50 bucks for this person. How am I going to, you know, make that something? So you want to make sure that you can, you have that resource when you're ready to do something like that. And so when you talked about mindset, It has to reflect the person who you are because you can't just change who you are because of your money situation. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I I think I would start with. And then also like money mindset is something that is going to evolve over time, Mm -hmm. right? So you're probably in a mindset of, you know, it could be scarcity because, you know, that's how you were brought up and that's how you're raised. There's so many complexities to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we bring that from our childhood into our adulthood, but it just, it's just baby steps, recognizing who you are and then making these little minds. Uh, you know, incremental steps to becoming the person and hitting those financial goals that yeah. you want to hit. Yeah. And I love that you're speaking to make it fit you. It's like yeah. put it on, like you're putting on a pair of favorite yes. jeans that fit. Like it doesn't exactly. have to be my, like for me and my husband, for example, <laughs> like his way is spreadsheets. And oh yes. <laughs> like very serious business, put on your suit. And I'm like, let's turn on some tunes. You got the sparkle going on, on, right? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So I love that. And I think that is just like, write that down and make it yours for sure. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. is there some mindsets that you find that we can start to practice? Like, I know people say that affirmations are super important. So is there like an affirmation or a mindset that you think that our listeners and this community could start to play with? Let's see, I would probably say that really embody or create a mantra for yourself Mm -hmm. that embodies who you want to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've embraced who we are, but now we're going to look towards who we want to be. Right. And so, and the goals you want to reach. And so that's what I would, I would highly, highly recommend. So create a mantra that is very specific to you Mm -hmm. and the goals that you want to reach. And then that's something that you can repeat on a daily process, you know, in the morning or an evening, wherever you find that it's important. It's good to post it places, you know, Mm -hmm. you post it on your computer, wherever you're going to post it. And that becomes your, that becomes your thing. And so I don't have one specific because I want someone to actually take the time to Think about who they want to be and then create the mantra from there. Absolutely. I love that. So I'm going to share mine just because I, I mean, I love to share what's Mm -hmm. working for me. And so recently I like I journal, I'm an avid journaler. And so recently I am working on what I call millionaire Josie. Ah, (laughs) So that's the mindset, that's the vision, that's the picture. And so when I think about millionaire Josie, the thought I'm thinking is like money supports me, money shows up for me. And that just makes me feel so warm and comforted. And so that could be something, I mean, it doesn't have to be yours per se, but definitely something that you can tweak and make your own. Exactly. So making it like making it real and like, like you said, post it everywhere and repeat it. And like, that's why I'm saying it even out loud now is because I'm making yeah. it real. Like, <laughs> exactly. I put it out in the world in this way. And so yes, mindset. So energetics, is there a difference between the mindset and energetic piece 
of working with money, would you say? I think the two probably go hand in hand yeah. because you need the the actions have to speak as well, right? Mm-hmm. So you can put the information out there. You can even change who your identity is. Like you said, Millionaire Josie, <laughs> you're changing your identity. But at the same time, now the behavior, now the actions have to come mm-hmm. along with it. And that's where the energy, you know, pipes in, right? Yeah. You're going to energize that mantra and you're going to actually embody it by doing yeah. what you say you want to do. Yeah. So the money dates, actually looking at your bank statement, creating a budget, allocating every penny. These are the action items that you need to do to actually become and take those baby steps forward. Absolutely. And you're saying allocate every penny. Every penny. And when I say every penny, so this is what they call a zero paced budget, right? And that is because remember those buckets of the the fun things that you want to do. So that's why we're allocating every penny. So you have your bills, that's your first part. But then all of a sudden you have your discretionary, that's secondary. And then you have this leftover, right? And that leftover is going towards your financial goals. So maybe buying a house or buying a car or travel, whatever that is, you're going to budget that right down to the last penny. Wow. So, wow. Okay. So you don't just budget and then have money sitting around to play you like no that goes into play that's going somewhere exactly (laughs) that's going somewhere that's not just gonna sit there so now let's shift a little bit and talk about growing our money so one of our beautiful listeners in our community asked the brilliant question do you pay off debt first do you invest first or do you do both I would highly recommend doing both because sometimes we wait and we wait a turn for an eternity, right? You know, so you're thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to just pay off my debt. I'm going to pay off my debt. And then, then I'm going to have the money to invest. Well, you know what? You know, it's going to take some time. And at the same time, you may be creating debt at the same time. So when is that really going to happen? So I would say to create a percentage, right? So again, the zero pace bunny rule works as though you create percentages for yourself. So if you have that money that's left over at the end of the day, after you've paid all your bills, your expenses are done, discretionary expenses have been taken care of, you have X amount. Now you're going to break that up into debt repayment. You're going to break it into savings. You're going to break it into an investment. And so I would highly recommend doing both. It's important so that you can build build wealth at the same time as getting out of any debt that you're already in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And earlier we touched on it when you shared that beautiful story with us of building wealth. And what do you say to your clients that want to start to build wealth? Where do you have them start? Again, I think saving and investing is really important. And it doesn't have to be like when people hear the word investing, they're thinking stocks and bonds and something, something super risky. And it doesn't have to be like that, right? We can do something that is very, very low key. You know, I don't want to recommend things because then people like think whatever, right? But there are many avenues and tools that you can go. Just talk to your, you know, financial advisors or the banks of something that's a little bit more safer. They have these risk assessment tests Mm -hmm. that you can take and you can see where you are on the scale. And what investments are actually going to match who you are again as your personality, right? So, so that's very important too. Yeah. So financial advisors. So recently, because I'm putting on this new identity, millionaire Josie, you get into this field where you are hearing that regular people have financial advisors. It's not just made for the millionaires. Absolutely. (laughs) You know, and people people don't know that, right? Exactly. Exactly. And it's and most of the time I would say, unless they work for the bank, they are gonna make the commission and their fees off of the products that you actually purchase with them or with other companies. So therefore the money's not even coming out of your pocket directly. (laughs) So why wouldn't you have a financial advisor, right? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So I'm glad you brought that up because I was just like, What? When I found that out, I was like, regular people, we could just like we could just go and talk to people and get the knowledge, get the information we need and make the decision that's best for us. We don't have to do it all on our own. Like, Absolutely. We don't have to do it all on our <laughs> own. own. Exactly. <laughs> Which I think is so brilliant and wonderful. <laughs> Earlier, you were talking about preparing for the unexpected. And I want to go back to that a little bit because I think it's something that we need to hit the nail on a little bit yeah. more because it's so <laughs> important. And so I would love for you to share with us. I don't know if you have methodology. I don't know why I can't mm-hmm. say that word. Or if you have a system or anything that starts to help people to to prepare a little even more for the unexpected, because especially right now with the times that we're living in, every day is kind of unexpected. In the last two years, a lot of us are playing catch up. 
Oh my goodness, it's so crazy now with inflation and the rising prices of everything, gas, mm -hmm. just your everyday simple things have like skyrocketed. And so, which means that you're left with less and less and less, yeah. right? I definitely, I actually personally have created a tool. It's called Track It and it actually mm -hmm. does all these things you put in your, your information and it kind of spits out where your money should be allocated and it gives you all these different type of analytics oh, to wow. actually see where your money is going. So I, I'll give you the link. But what I would recommend, and there's so many apps and things out there. So, you know, do whatever you, you choose is, is comfortable for you, but yeah. choose something because yeah. you want to actually see what has happened to your money and what it, where it's actually going. Exactly. And that's really key because being prepared means that you're actually putting money aside for these things that are going to come up every, every year. Like for example, maintenance on your vehicle or even Christmas, if you know you do a lot of Christmas shopping or whatever, whatever that is, it's going to come up every year. Yeah. It's not a surprise. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Right. You make it a surprise. <laughs> it's like, oh, some it's us, here again. <laughs> yeah, some of us make it a surprise. That's right. And then here's another just easy, quick tip. So a lot of like grocery stores and things like that, they have those points programs. And a lot of people, they just say, oh, do you, I have $20. I'm just going to use it now. I'm going to discount it off the groceries that I'm, I'm you know, purchasing today. Yeah. But Thanksgiving, for example, right? It's a lot of money on your current budget to actually purchase all the groceries for Thanksgiving. And so why not, if you think to yourself, I'm going to save up all those points for the entire year, and I'm going to have to, I have all the money that I need yeah. to do my Thanksgiving dinner. And so these are just the things that are talking about being prepared, yeah. because you don't have to like have that hit to your budget. It could be actually, you know, paid for out of your points. So just something simple like that, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking like what you're saying is starts me thinking like you're right these things that come up every year <laughs> we don't think to budget for them in advance like even just thanksgiving i would not like in my mind the josie yeah. that i am today like transparent and honest i would not think i need to save a little extra for thanksgiving i would just go out and for thanksgiving and you know, buy what, buy you need. what I need. <laughs> exactly. And so even thinking about that, that Thanksgiving is coming, like, let's prepare for it now. Let's make it a priority now. That is a mindset shift. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. And so I would love to talk a little bit about you, Carolyn. I would love to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about you and what you do for fun and like your mom. Right? Yes. Yeah, yes, mom. exactly. Yep. <laughs> your mom. And so the listeners of the Make life fun is that's the community of moms and the big umbrella as I always talk about is that big self-acceptance piece and I think our stories are so powerful mm -hmm. of what got us to where we are today and so I would love for you to share with us what you feel called to share about you motherhood and your journey to being this financial goddess who shares no, no, no. <laughs> for sure you know motherhood is interesting so I'll just tell you I have two children one is 17 now and I actually have another child who is 26 so I feel like I raised two only children but <laughs> but it's a lot of learned lessons so I'd love to share something along the way both my kids were involved with competitive sports and so my son was involved with soccer and basketball mm -hmm. and my daughter with dance and tennis. And so, you know, they can be expensive, all the fees that go along with, with these types of competitive sports, right? Mm -hmm. And for my son, you know, I was young then. And so we just kind of played it by ear, you know, mm -hmm. you just, you know, find the money somewhere and you just pull it out and off you go and you, you just live that way. Yeah. But as I got older and my daughter, you know, started to become involved in her sports and activities, Again, I put it as part of the budget mm -hmm. because it's something that's important. I think sports are important. It teaches kids discipline. It teaches them teamwork and just working with people. Like There's so many lessons oh, yeah. to be involved in, in uh, a team sport. Yeah. You know, it has so many benefits. So why not make that part of your life, you know, and, and your life of your children? And so so because it was so important to me, that that's something that I wanted to invest in and, and made sure that I put that money aside for those activities but not everybody you know has that opportunity right mm -hmm. and so you kind of have to think outside the box 
So if you're in a position where you're, you want to do these things for your kids, but you're not able to, there are so many other programs out there. You need to seek them and look for them because they are like, I just, you know, there's so many that I can think of at the top of my head. I'm actually located in Canada, so it's different, right? Because yeah, yeah. there are different programs, but I know there are some obviously in the, the United States as well, but people need to look for them because it's important to actually not feel the burden because mm-hmm. parents always want to provide for your kids and you'll take money from wherever you can find it, Rob Peter to pay Paul just so that you can provide but there's help right there's help for people and so my advice and my tip is that people seek it out and if you have it also pay it forward you know Mm -hmm. pay it forward to someone that maybe uh, need the assistance as well yeah that's just something that I that's you know important I think for me anyways important and thank you for sharing that tip with us and that wisdom because you said you were raising two independent children yeah age and so that wisdom comes from experience I am from experience <laughs> absolutely and so yes yeah, so I would love to hear a little more of your story of a little bit about you sure <laughs> yeah so I was born and raised in Canada you know my parents are from Caribbean descent I got into finance I'm trying to think of what my passion was and the reason why I actually got into <laughs> finance I don't know I think I kind of just fell into it I think I'm like a numbers girl I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what happened mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just kind of fell into it. But working in a hospital, to be honest with you, is what gave me the compassionate side. A lot of the times, a lot of accountants and things, they, you know, it's all about the numbers. But working in a hospital, I really saw how you needed to be compassionate and how you needed to actually understand people's circumstance, Mm -hmm. right? And so that's, that's kind of where I found my passion when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. But me personally, you know, like, I loved raising my kids, you know, I'm happy to see my son, he's now graduated and doing his thing in the world and my daughter's just about to go off to university too so it's exciting to see like the fruits of all your labor of mm-hmm. all the years of uh, putting in the hard work right yeah. I feel like I graduated too right <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, if I could pay it forward, then why not? <laughs> why not? Yes. I, every new chapter with my son, he is now 18 months. I say I've graduated Beautiful. every month. Like, I feel it's like so I've graduated. <laughs> it's so true. Paid. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that with us and that wisdom. So we have talked about all things money, which I <laughs> am loving. Like it gets me so pumped and so excited to share this with our listeners. And so debt A lot of us, as I said earlier, are playing catch up when it comes to debt. And Mm -hmm. a lot of it seems to be credit cards, right? Credit card debt. And to meet my mom, she always Mm -hmm. said growing up, this is the worst kind of debt you can have. (laughs) You do not even need a credit card. Like burn them, cut them, run away from credit cards. (laughs) (laughs) That was what was in my ear growing up. So. I love her already. <laughs> <laughs> Cut them all up. So I would love to hear, yeah, your take on debt, especially credit card debt. You know, consumer, the average consumer in America is, is in the 5 billion range for consumer debt. And again, it goes back to what we were talking about before mm-hmm. the ease and how easy it is just to tap and, you know, not think about it. And it's not actually real. So debt can be a burden. Right? It's something that keeps you up at night. Mm-hmm. And it's something that's preventing you from living the life that you really want. I would really highly recommend is try to put yourself on a plan. Now, all of your extra money, again, does not need to go to paying off debt, but you need to kind of see the end of the road. And so they have different methods and one's called the, you know, snowball method where if you have multiple credit cards, you can easily put your focus on one particular one. And and I would say, pick the one that has the lowest balance. Because once you paid off that one, you're going to feel this surge of momentum. And you're going to be like, what? I did that? Amazing. And you move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. And the next one, you're taking the payment that you made on the last one, adding it to the next one, and you've just snowballed that. And so that's what that means, right? And so these are just, you know, techniques that are trying to help us to tackle it. And so we can become zero debt free people. Zero debt free people. Absolutely. And do you think that is the ultimate is to be zero debt free in my circle that I'm in now, I've been hearing this thing of like debt is neutral. <laughs> this comet, this is kind of like a, what, what mantra to try on. And when I think of that, to me, that sounds so not true because of my mother's voice. Yeah. Your mother's voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so is the goal to be zero debt free, except like the house, the car. I mean, what is your take on? So what I would say is consumer debt, try to have as little consumer debt as possible. 
right? So, you know, again, I understand things happen, whatever, right? But try to keep that to as a minimum as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, when they talk about good debt, good debt is basically using, like, for example, your equity in your home, not to go on a shopping spree, mm -hmm. but to take that money and then invest it in something else that yeah. is going to return more money to you. And so this is where they talk about good debt and bad debt. So you want that to be, so for example, if you took that equity from your home and you were to put that as a down payment for an investment property, mm -hmm. right? You're, yes, you are incurring more debt because now you've taken on a second mortgage. However, that mortgage, the second mortgage is paying for itself because you may have a renter, you have something that is, you know, funding that. Yeah. So that is where we talk about good debt and that is how you actually build generational wealth yeah. consumer debt definitely bad <laughs> try and pay that off as much as you can yeah. get down to a zero balance budget and then the second part is then using your good credit because yeah. what you've done now is you've built good credit because you've got rid of the consumer debt to actually incur debt that is going to create generational wealth for absolutely. you absolutely and this all ties it together right because budgeting if we're budgeting for everything to the last penny mm -hmm. then we are able to have that saving have those cushions so that you're able to not have to keep accruing debt as you're paying debt off because exactly. that is where the trap i feel like it's just like a circle, a vicious circle that can build if you aren't getting rid of that, the consumer debt that you were saying that kind of mm -hmm. makes you feel like you're drowning. Exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and you know, you, you think about your children too, you know, we're moms, right? So you think mm -hmm. about your children, you don't want your children to have those same heavy burdens. Yeah. And this is where we're talking about generational wealth, because yeah. if you had the help from your parents to be able to purchase a home or whatever it is, right, you know, pay for their education or something mm -hmm. like that, how much further ahead is is your children going to be and then the next generation and then the next yeah, all right absolutely. so it is so much more important than buying the new purse mm -hmm. <laughs> just saying put our kids in the mix when you say you're doing it for your kids like sign yes, me up right you know? like, okay <laughs> sign me up. i'm here for it that's 100%. right percent so with yeah with generational wealth that we're creating for our kids when we think of it that way that everything we do benefits or hinders the, our child, the our one child. person we want to give the world to, that definitely brings us back to, oh my gosh, sit with it. And what is That's the most right. important thing? That is the it, question, right? What is absolutely. The most thing <laughs> in this moment for us to do that. And so I would love to speak on the generational mindsets because we all have different mindsets when it comes to money women versus men, being African-American versus Caucasian. Like we all have grown up differently. We've all been taught Absolutely. different things about <laughs> money. And so as I'm doing this money work and I'm healing my money story, money is the root of all evil. Money doesn't grow on trees. I mean, you name it. They're oh, all yes. out there, right? Exactly. <laughs> as I am doing that inner work, what I'm finding is it is so deeply, deeply rooted in us. So I want to a little bit hit the nail on the head, how important it is for us to do this work for our children. I'm just getting started. Like this year is the first year that I went hard into this money story mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. And I'm just seeing, I'm just starting to see like the benefits of it. And so I just want to, for the listeners to get a little bit more from a person who is quite the professional at the money. And so from hearing that, yeah. what would you say to the people that have these deep rooted money stories? that most of us don't even know they're playing in our heads because I didn't know they were playing in my head until I started to look. That's right. Look a little closer. And so, yeah, I think journaling, like you talked about that before, is very important because it kind of gets into our deeper thoughts and mm -hmm. it's, it's happening when we are the most relaxed, yeah. right? And we're just going to journal and we're going to talk just talk to yourself yeah. about the, some of the incidences that you remember when you were a child, right? And some of the, you know, yeah, the preachings that your parents taught you or even that they didn't teach you, but you heard, right? Uh, when you were a kid. And so just write it down. And when you see it on paper, you can ask yourself, is this something that I want to carry forward to my children, mm -hmm. right? Because you're going to see it 
written in front of you. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of just identifying, you know, who you maybe are have inherited some of these practices mm-hmm. from. And then on the other side, the high side of the journal is now where do you want to be? Yeah. Who do you want to embody? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's really great to have a mentor. I mean, this is the, the important thing too. And super, <laughs> you know, if you can find someone that you admire and the way that they have done, you know, raising their kids perhaps, or even just how they manage their money, or if they've started a business or an entrepreneur, anybody like that, you know, it's good to have a mentor and just have mm-hmm. these little conversations with them and just say, you know, how did you do that? Or how yeah. did you, you know, come up with that strategy? Because we learn from each other, yeah. right? Yeah, we do. Exactly. We learn from each other. And so that is kind of how you change those mindsets, those yeah. deep rooted mindsets into something that's just, you know, going to blossom into something beautiful. Absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head. Don't do it alone. I'm definitely Don't. not doing it alone. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I am not doing it alone. I definitely have help and I definitely help my clients the same. So I'm an embodiment coach. And so Think the perfect. embodiment piece mm-hmm. of connecting to, to your body and getting connected to it is so powerful and so life-changing and life-giving. So hit the nail on the head, get support, mm-hmm. get help. Get and help. It's possible to transform your money stories. It, exactly. It can be done. <laughs> And that's, that's exactly why I got into money coaching, because it's sometimes it's not even just about the investments and all of that. You can get a financial advisor for that, but it's just the day-to-day. Sometimes we're struggling with the day-to-day. How do I do a budget? How do I do any of these things, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of where, you know, my, my role comes in. Absolutely. And that's why I was bringing this up, because I know that you would help us out a lot. And <laughs> so for a lot of us that have find ourselves, let's say in, let's call it the black, we are like, oh my gosh, okay, now I've sat down, I've looked at the numbers and I'm not really liking what I'm seeing. And now I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. Now I'm starting to feel anxiety. Now it's like, oh my gosh, right? Exactly. <laughs> we need a little bit of light. So we need a little bit of wisdom. So Carolyn, I would love to hear yeah. how, we know, how we start moving That's forward. how we start. Yeah. You know, you I think creating a strategy, creating goals, right? Goals are interesting because you really can't just say, I want to be, I don't know, a successful entrepreneur, or I want to be, you know, wealthy. That is not really a goal. It's an aspiration. It's a great aspiration, but it's not a goal. Mm -hmm. And so you got to put some meat into it. You're going to say to yourself, okay, in six months, I'm going to reach X target. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to put some measurables against that, right? So at every month, you're going to say, am I this much closer? Am I that much closer to the goal? So you kind of have to put some meat in behind Mm -hmm. it, right? Because if it's not measurable, then what's the point, right? Exactly. So you got to put the time frame on it. So you find yourself now in a place where you're like, oh crap, I've caught it. So now be thankful that you That's caught it. And you're like, it. okay, I, I, can ch- I can change this around. And now you can start to put like, and by 30 days, I would like to see myself here. And mm-hmm. in 60 days here, it start to have those That's baby right. steps to take to get you to where you want to be. Cause what I think we happens is we see it bad and we want it immediately fixed. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's the instant gratification culture. That's what we're in, right? As much as, you know, we want to deny it. That's who we are. (laughs) Thank you for that. Because it is true. Rome wasn't built in a day. I would love for you to tell us where our listeners and our community can get in contact with you, can work with you, can tap into this energy and wisdom that you have. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, my company's name is called The Financial Moment. And I, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, you know, all of those places. Actually just recently launched a podcast. It's called Saving for Your First Home. Mm-hmm. So again, it's just about, you know, helping people to create wealth. Mm-hmm. Once you have that first property, you know what I mean? There's so many options for you, but sometimes it's so overwhelming just thinking about how much money I actually have to put as a down payment. So yeah, my podcast just kind of works through that and it has some great budgeting tips and some practical ways that you can actually implement in your lives. So I highly recommend that you just check that out as well. It is that financial moment. Um, it's called saving for your first home, saving for your first home, saving <laughs> for your first home. That is brilliant. And an easy one to remember. Because easy to remember. Easy to remember. So if you had to give us a tip or two on saving for your first home, what would be the, maybe your favorite 
Okay, so for sure. Yeah. So I would say my favorite would be doing the tracking exercise. I know we talked about that already, but it's actually my favorite thing to do. So I love helping people with this because there, this is where your mind is just blown, right? You're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I spent all that money, right? And so track it you know, do the work and actually put in and actually see where your priorities are and then allocate it to where you really want them to go. Absolutely. Because by tracking it, you could surprise yourself and almost find money. Yes. So exactly. I would go to the financialmoment.com backslash track dash it. And then you can read up all about this particular tool. It was some really amazing. It's easy. You put in your day-to-day expenses and you put in what you think your budget should be. And it actually shows you a lot of analytics, you know, year over year, all the fun financial stuff, you know, that I get <laughs> lit up about. <laughs> but I think it makes it super easy for people yes. so they don't have to do the work. <laughs> oh, this conversation, Carolyn, has been a pleasure. Like literally geeking out with you like it feels my soul it feels so good so thank you for being here I love it the end of the podcast I always love to give the floor to my guests to Mm -hmm. after this conversation I mean it's such a beautiful conversation we've had about budgeting about wealth and about mindset all that good stuff is there anything left on your heart that you feel like you want to share with the make life fun listeners Sure. Like, I think that making change in your life is the most exciting thing. So you talk about how, you know, having fun and making yourself light up. Don't think that change is something negative. Mm -hmm. It can be super fun and it can be, it can light up your life. I would just say, you know, embrace it, kind of go into this season saying, you know what, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to set some goals and I'm going to achieve them and make that change, make that little tweak. And you're going to see such a huge difference. And it's not going to make a difference just to you, but your family. And that's not mm-hmm. the, the most as important thing to you is. So that is what I want to share with, with everyone. Yes, don't be, don't be afraid effect. to change. <laughs> yes, Change can be fun. It really can. When you start to have, like you said, set those goals and you start to hit them and you start to become that person you can't help but feel good and everybody around you can't help but feel good exactly (laughs) so yes if we can start to embrace change thank you (laughs) thank you carolyn from the bottom of my heart thank you for being part of the self-love movement your support and care matters here please be sure to subscribe review and share Get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makelifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.